Hey y'all, my name is Tamara Andress. I am your Fit and Faith podcast host. I'm pumped to be here. Just me, no words, no scripts, no intros, no outros. I love authenticity. I hope to breed vulnerability. And I usually do this alongside another dreamer, mover, shaker, entrepreneur, passionista is what I love to call them. If you're a dude, then a dude. But I am loving just coming together in community with other people to share their high and low stories, to share their journeys to come back, because I believe ultimately that's where God would have us. He would have us on the mountaintop. And even though we learn a ton in the pit and in the valley, God would want us right now, especially in this season of life, in this time of our culture, to shine. And so here I am, I want to teach you how to shine. I wanna be alongside you when you get your glow. I wanna catapult you into your calling, whatever that is. So this isn't a fitness podcast. This is not a religious banter, though we preach Jesus all day long. Uh, And this is not just about nutrition or health or wealth, though I like some green and I know you do too. It's not okay for us to not be okay with talking about all of these things in unison. You guys, we don't just need a mental health podcast. We don't just need a fitness podcast. We don't just need a religious spiritual podcast. It needs to blend. This is what Fit and Faith is all about. It's all about creating alignment, connectivity. It's about pursuing your wholeness and claiming it over your life and over the lives of the loved ones that you have around you in your community. So thank you for tuning in. I would love to get to know you more. Um, You can like, review, subscribe, whatever it is. Send me an email, DM me. It's me. I have an amazing team alongside me, but you guys are getting me for now. So enjoy. I'm so pumped to have a coffee conversation with you is what I'd love to call them. Don't have my coffee right now, but I have it in my system as you can see. All the love. Let's do this together and uh, keep going for your dreams, y'all. today. Um, Obviously, Heather and I are in a different state, but that's only because we are coming to you to conversate, which is a part of what she does, and we'll talk more about that, but also just to to meet you. Um, Yesterday, I had a live about isolation, and we don't want you to feel alone or go stir crazy in your home, even though we're hoping that you're staying healthy and safe and clean. Uh, So we're here today for another recording of the Fit and Faith Live podcast, and I am pumped to bring you uh, a friend who I have been following on social media for a while now, someone that I just admire the way that she uh, serves her audience and uh, the people who follow along with her. And I am such a sucker for images. And so if you want to pop over right now to go check her out on Instagram, you will love her feed. Um, It's fresh and clean, and I feel simple. And I think that that's really what people are looking for now with the jargon of everything that they have being pushed to them on a constant basis. So welcome, Heather. Uh, I'm glad to have you virtually here today. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. So I always just kind of jump in and I never know where that jump in is going to be. And so I would love for you to just kind of go with it to share where um, where you are, maybe in the world right now um, and share how you got there and how this is um, something that you're like where your passion started. Yeah. So um, I was. Do you want to start where I was like, yeah, go with it. we're going for <laughs> Um, Born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so I'm like a little East Coaster, and um, I went to school up in Idaho in communications, and right now I'm currently kind of doing a entrepreneurial program with Acton School of Business while doing purpose coaching, and my goal for purpose coaching is to help women fully embrace and step into their purpose so they can bring positive change and influence into their homes and communities because women who know their purpose lift nations and that's what we need we need a world of just people lifting each other and inspiring others to do their best that's really good so what inspired you to like get into that place? Was there something that you felt like was void in the market or were you not being like mentored in the way you were hoping? Um, that's a good question. I think 
I've always felt that women and everyone really, but women weren't um, really living up to their potential. I feel like we're just, there's a power that we hold and there's a reason why um, God made us mothers. Mm -hmm. And with the voice of the world, it really demeans that power that women really hold. Um, I've had lots of opportunities to just at college to be over different women organizations. And one thing that always, I want to say frustrate me, but concerned me was how women couldn't see their value and their potential. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not saying that I know mine fully, sure. but I've learned that as I step into that purpose, as I embrace those gifts and qualities that are unique to me, mm -hmm. um, my life is more fulfilling. I have more meaning, purpose, and direction, and mm -hmm. I'm able to inspire others to lift others. So I wouldn't say there was an, an exact moment. Yeah. I do remember when I was, I was like, I think 15, I was pretty yeah. young. Yeah, I love it. And I was listening to this conference. My mom had, um, I have a twin sister, and we went to this event, cool. and this lady was speaking, and she said that she firmly believes any virtuous young woman can change the world. Mm -hmm. And you know how in your head you just kind of dismiss comments like that, like, oh, yeah. she's not talking to me. Yeah. Well, I felt like... God was like, heard that little dismissive comment I made was like, no, Heather, she's talking to you. Wow. And you can change the world and you have a place to play mm -hmm. in this whole existence. And so I've since then, I've just kind of been aware of that yeah. and, so yeah. and wanted to create something that would allow um, women to really see their goodness and step into that and claim it and bless their communities and families and homes. That's beautiful. It's really ironic that the conversation already has taken a turn where I'm like, aha, I see you. Like, I see you, Jesus. I see the purpose mm -hmm. in this conversation already. Um, because in the last week uh, with my core creative coaching gals, we have had unpacked this question as like our beginning query um, or our beginning thoughtful or mindfulness practice. And it was, are you pursuing a life of potential or a life of purpose? And so I love what you're saying. And I think the potential piece has a lot of importance for people to understand what that is. But I think the cool key concept of how we both share and inspire women is that we want them to be operating in this place of purpose. Mm -hmm. And so the example that was shared with me via podcast was that Jesus himself had abundant potential. He had the ability to heal the nations when he was here. And yet he chose specifically just picking out different people. And through that, staying really on course with his purpose, he he answered what it is that God would have him do while he was here. So an, another part to that, he's sitting on the cross or not sitting, but hanging on the cross. And people are saying, like, you have all this potential. If you have the power within you, why don't you just get up off the cross and walk and be free and be healed? And he knew that he had that ability and he had that power. But instead, he hung there for us and carrying our sin and knew that this was the place that this was his purpose for being alive and this was his purpose for walking the earth and so we as as business owners as women as moms like we have a multitude of potential in so many different areas and so many pockets that we could pursue but when we really come into alignment with knowing our purpose we have that aha experience that that where you're you know walking into right now where you're like I am seeing the fruit. I understand that this is my comfort zone, but also the place that you're willing to be uncomfortable to pursue more, more purpose and to know that like everything that even the times when you're 15, even the times when you're five, shoot, I remember memories from me in elementary school that 
they literally were, they were seeds that God was planting without my awareness that I now tap into as a resource and an individual piece to my fingerprint and my identity. So share as and you said it already so beautifully, but I know you could unpack it even more when you are coaching a woman or are guiding a woman through this process of understanding her potential and understanding her purpose. How would you, what's an activity or a resource that you would provide her to, to understand that? Yeah. So the first thing we start out with is more mindset. Mm -hmm. um, so we start with mindset tools of receiving. A lot of that's gratitude. You hear a lot of this over the internet, but it's different having someone kind of hone in on you and where your deficiencies are and what your habits are, what, what your con how your mind and brain are yes. constantly filtering um, just the everyday thoughts, patterns, and your reactions to them. Yeah. So we start with mindset and then we go into um, what I call a journey map. Mm -hmm. And this is where you look, we have the individual look at their past and mm -hmm. find those key moments that a decision needed to be made. And whether it was the right decision or the wrong decision, either way, it that point had a big impact on their life yeah. where we can then look at this kind of yeah. highs and all the lows yeah. with, our, with our life and target those areas and ask them, well, what made that experience enjoyable? Mm -hmm. Or what was so terrible about that experience? What did you learn from that? And what, what did you, um, if you were to talk to yourself at that time, what would you do differently? And as the individuals are talking, we start to see patterns of what they value, what mm -hmm. their talents, their natural talents. We're not, I feel like sometimes we code talents into like, I'm a singer and I'm a yeah. song player or something rather than those just unique ways that we communicate with others or the unique ways we view and see the world or our ability to attract people and our charisma. Yeah. Um, I feel like we give a little less focus on the hidden talents per se, but as they're talking, their values and talents and the environments that they thrive in begin to naturally come out from their past. And so I just lis listen and identify those things yeah. and package it up for them. And then through that, um, we cater those talents and values and see how they can apply them into their daily life. I feel cool. like a lot of times people are like, if I have a purpose, I need to go start a company. I need to start this or I need right. to do that. And they, and you don't, you have so much power and so much influence just within your home and communities for just being yeah. who you are. And once you own that and step into that and start even just with like a simple mindset shift, your yeah. whole aura and life really brings on a vitality that impacts others and just brings yeah. breath, greater breath into your life. And Okay. That's what I've, one of the joys I've been able to see is, is people go off and create things versus people who just start making these small adaptations in their life that make such a huge difference in living a life of meaning. I think that's really wise and a really like important part of people understanding uh, what we do and like the coaching process of that, because often people immediately assume that like, oh, it's for business owners only. And right. there are so many vast opportunities for people to understand the importance of a coaching experience and where that gives you an opportunity for abundance in your life. And it doesn't have to be cultivating a business. You don't have to be an entrepreneur. You don't even have to have a desire to do that. A cool thing about an experience I've had with women as we've um, unpacked their passions, which is essentially where you can find your purpose um, because mm -hmm. Your passions are God given like God is like the passion of Christ like that's who he is and so he innately gives us those things and I think oftentimes we forget to tap into them um, I can already see so much that's going to come as a high or a low point um, in people's life from an impact perspective during this coronavirus situation mm -hmm. and so it's going to be neat to see five years from now who is walking in purpose because of this time. And so knowing that there is an opportunity for goodness to come out of all of this, um, but to know that like your passion 
is really a part of, again, that individual identity. And as you said at the beginning, you you see women who aren't able to walk in confidence or own those those spaces of who they are and not really walking out what it is that their purpose to do here. And I often feel it's because they think their passion isn't as well equipped or well developed as somebody else's. And therefore, they just kind of shy back away from it and say, oh, that person's better at public speaking. That person's better at serving her community because she can bake <laughs> or she right. you know, is the best neighbor. And I don't have that ability. And so knowing that each person has their individual gifting and it doesn't mean that that passion is meant to have an impact in the whole world. But you also might just be within your church and that church has a ripple effect that can mm -hmm. impact the entire world. And so giving people that that confidence boost, knowing that it's not a matter of like affecting change in your neighborhood and everyone all automatically is healed and saved and whole and healthy or whatever it is that your passion is, but knowing that they have access to now share that wealth of information and that love, essentially it all comes down and boils back to love and value to their children. That will then impact their children. That will then impact their children. So it's really passion and purpose is all about legacy. And that's mm -hmm. what Jesus did when he was here. Yeah, you reminded me of a quote. I just printed it out just like the other day because I really liked it. But it's in this article. So let me find yeah, it real quick. I love that. No, <laughs> take your time. That's awesome. Oh, okay, so it says, when the real history of mankind is fully disclosed, will it feature the echoes of gunfire or the shaping sound of lullabies? The great armistice is made by military men or the peacemaking of women in homes and in neighborhoods. Will what happens in the cradles and kitchens prove to be more controlling than what happens in Congress? And I love that quote because it wow, is what I have you just full said. body chills. I don't know if you can see my full body goosebumps. That's amazing. Yeah. It's it's what happens in the cradles that really changes and impacts the world. Everyone uh, has a mom <laughs> and everyone has been influenced, hopefully mostly for good, but in some unfortunate circumstances for bad. Yeah. And we have the power to make a difference. And I just firmly, firmly believe that everyone here has been prepared and uniquely tutored to come to the earth at this time. And God has a work for them to do. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter how small or big or whatever you think it is. It's that effect in God's plan that's going to make a difference for him to do his work, to love his children and bring them home. Mm. And, and that's what I just feel like that's what the power of women is, is it's creating and creating a life of meaning for your family mm -hmm. so that they can go and continue that ripple effect that you were just talking about yeah. and bless the world. Others. Yeah, that's amazing. Gosh. And this is why we love what we do, y'all, because it's it's for you and it's for like that ability to connect with one person and see them and watch that joy. And you said the word aura and that, you know, vibrancy of their life, that vitality come to life in you. Um, but it's also knowing that the huge impact and the huge influence that that one person can have. So, so incredible. So I want to kind of like pull back because we could keep going down and just like talk you yeah. know, business and coaching and all of that. But I want to know um, from a personal testimonial perspective, where were those highs and lows for you and how has it been a trajectory point for, for your path? Yeah. Um, Somebody, this gets really personal. Yeah, it does. I love it. Okay. So let's see. I haven't looked at mine for a while, yeah. but there's, okay. So in third grade, this is a low point, but in third grade, um, there was this kid and I won't say his name, even though we've talked about this experience before. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I was just, we we're heading back from lunch with my little, high, little third grade class back to the schoolroom, And 
I was with my sister, I had a twin sister. I think I said that already. Yeah. Anyway, we were in the same class. And our two friends, and I was just kind of in a goofy mood, I guess. And this kid, um, I guess, forgot to take his medication and told the teacher, hey, I forgot to take my medication. She's like, okay, we'll run down to the nurse office. And so he kind of just aimlessly bumped into us mm -hmm. on his way. And I just kind of mimicked his behavior. Um, I wasn't trying to be malice or rude or make fun mm -hmm. of him, but in a sense, I I was. Sure. And I later found out that he had passed out because he didn't make it to the nurse office in time. Oh. And I don't know what condition he has, mm -hmm. but it was obviously serious enough that he you know, passed out and didn't make it back to the classroom. And I just felt so bad mm -hmm. for in a sense, judging him before recognizing and understanding his situation fully. Mm. And it was in that moment that I decided, and it's something I'm not perfect at, but that I would never judge someone before I really got to know their story. Mm -hmm. And I had to replay that experience a couple of times. There's another time that I remember in seventh grade where a similar thing happened and again it was just this rem big huge reminder to me like you don't know people's stories you don't know their background who are you to to judge them and to I don't know put blame towards them when you have never even experienced yes. what they're going through yeah so those were some lows that helped me identify some character traits I didn't want to yeah. hold on to. It's good. Um, a high moment was I was doing a, a service mission mm -hmm. in, it was just in Southern California, but we were there just um, helping people find Jesus. Mm -hmm. And our leader, for whatever reason, picked me out of the crowd and randomly just had me um, stand up and kind of speak to everyone about my experience so far and that was a little nerve-wracking but it was as i was walking up to speak in front of everyone i just said a little prayer and asked god that he would bless me with the words needed to just inspire and help my group and it was a really eye-opening experience because as I was speaking, I knew that it was God's words and that he was using me as his instrument to let his children know that he loves them, that they're doing a great work here, and that he's appreciative of their efforts and their time and their sacrifice. And... That moment helped me to see um, really the essence of Proverbs um, 5, 2 through, th two through 3. Trust uh -huh. the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understandings and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just, that was, that was another highlight realizing helping me realize and recognize that when I put my full trust in the Lord, he's there and that he has my back and through him, I can do all things. Again, that's now in Proverbs. Yeah. Something. <laughs> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. And so that was another highlight. And then this, the example I shared with you before with at that conference I was sitting at where God was like, Heather, she's talking to you. Yeah. Those were moments where I realized, okay, there's something I can do to bless others. And I can do that because God's behind me and he's going to fill my mouth to say the things that are necessary to lift, motivate, and inspire people to step into their purpose and come to who they are so and bring that to God's table. So beautiful. It's, it's wild when uh, even as a young person, and, and I see this in my son specifically because he's he's um, quickly impulsive because he's just <laughs> vibrant. That's just how he is. Um, but I see often how he then emotionally handles or responds or is self reflecting or even self critiquing things that happen after he has made a choice, after he's made a decision. 
intuition and also having the innate ability to recognize that was wrong, that that's not who I want to be. And then being able to take action towards the evolution of becoming better and yeah. become the best version. And I, I just love that that's not taught. I mean, maybe when you're little and you're like, oh, like as a mom, right? As we are, are guiding and stewarding our little ones to say, do you think that was the best choice? Like, let's think about that again. Sure. But mm -hmm. I'm seeing this in situations where I'm not there or I will not speak so that I can watch what happens. And it's pretty amazing that that's like an innate trait of God giving us that goodness and that self-awareness and that identity from birth that mm -hmm. doesn't be coached in or out of someone. And so I think it's really valuable that that can happen that at that age, but it's also still happening as we are progressing through life in our 30s, 40s, 50s, and, and thereafter, there will be checkpoints that we have on a given daily basis, minute by minute, hour by hour, as an opportunity for us to either listen and hone in and, and tweak because we don't get it right all the time. We're not perfect. We're, you know, we're, we're imperfect, in fact. Um, mm -hmm. But knowing that God's whispering at any given moment and we have an opportunity to choose how we respond and how we um, shed light on those things. So thank you for sharing. I know yeah. it's always hard, especially when you're little and you, you're like, ah, at that age, you can carry the guilt, but now you can release yourself from that and know that. You didn't know any better, but you, it, the fact that it like self-checked and self-regulated you is pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Were you gonna say something? Well, I thought you were gonna say something. <laughs> I was gonna ask another question, but if you have a way that you're, oh, you're I just love that you talked about how you know we're God sends us here with that compass of rightness, and I feel like oftentimes as we grow up following our heart or that compass gets a little more muddled because we, you know, gain, learn information and our mind starts to take more control that, that like a carnal side of us. Yeah. And, um, man, it's just, just Pocahontas has a lot to say about this. I feel yes. like she's so good at just like connecting with, with mother nature and following her heart and that's what we need to do more of and I know that I've struggled a lot in the last especially the last like five years mm -hmm. I kind of got caught up in the mind leading uh, my life and it wasn't a very didn't lead to positive experiences very much so and anyway so I just love that you said that God has given us that compass. And mm -hmm. as we follow that mm -hmm. intuition that he's given us, mm -hmm. we can stay on a path that's good for us, leading us to, to God and to the blessed peoples around us. It's really good. Um, I'm in the process of writing a book. This is a fun thing about like meeting new people and talking via podcast because you don't know everything about me, even though social media might show one thing. And one of the things I'm talking about is specifically about this. And it's that concept of a moral barometer. Have you heard this? Yeah. And so like my um, husband specifically is in HVAC. And so this concept of a thermostat and mm -hmm. you have a choice in a thermostat, you gauge the temperature outside and then you adjust yourself and your room and your home to meet that expectation for yourself on how you want to feel. And so this is your internal moral barometer as an opportunity. If you look at it as a thermostat, you gauge the world around you and you set the expectation of your of your zone. And God's called us into being at maximum like capacity, like in the mm -hmm. sense of saying that we have the ability to adjust the hottest situation, we can bring it down. The coldest situation, we can regulate it back to this temperature that we know is what he, where he would have us be. And that's understanding our alignment of our mind, body, and soul, and our vertical understanding of who he would have us, you know, walk into. And this is a part where in that moral barometer, there is that control factor of, of staying in your comfort zone and knowing that we actually have a greater capacity and it's important for us to to push the limit and to know that you know there might be people in your home at any given time that are like it is freezing in here can you please turn the heat on and you're like 
this is my comfort zone. This is where I like it or vice versa. It is so hot. Can you please turn the AC on? It's like, no, nope, this is where I like it. Everybody's going to have a different moral barometer, a different thermostat that they're setting their life to. And it's really important that you know that there's going to be other people who can come alongside you and, and not only test you and make you come out of your comfort zone, but also there's going to be a huge amount of people that enjoy the temperature that you sit at. And so knowing as we cultivate these businesses or our, our individualized message or our individual um, you know, imprint on the world that we can't be for everyone. And while God intends for our light to shine and penetrate all places, even the dark, we're not going to be able to, to hang out in the dark. Like that's not where we're called to be. And, and, and I mean that in the sense of like some people are called to be in the dark, but their thermostat and their moral barometer can handle it. I can't. And I know that from, from following my mind and pursuing things culturally that I, I have to hang out in a certain area at a certain temperature for me to be at my highest, you know, operating temperature, if you will. Yeah. Um, so I just think it's really interesting, like as you share that, that, that correlation, it, it really matters. And people, people believe that once you figure it all out, I don't know what that is because it, I, we're never, I don't think ever going to be there fully figured it all out until I'm in heaven. And even then I'm going to be like mind blown. I'm like, you yeah. kidding me? I should have known this. I should have figured this out sooner. Um, but realizing that like, because we don't have it figured all out or figured out doesn't mean that you shouldn't pursue that per place of purpose. Instead, right. you should pursue it harder. Yeah, I love that. When does your book come out? Ah, I'm excited so about this. Oh, well, it's contingent on whether or not I do it through a publisher or a or self-publishing. So I'm in that stage right now. I actually took advantage of this season uh, that we're in. in right of the world and I stayed up really late the other night, which is like super, I am 8 p.m. I'm at 8.30, I am out to the world. So if you're in her, like DMing me at that point, I'm not responding until the morning at 5.30. So if you like to sleep in, don't DM me late at night because I will wake you up. Um, but I I was like, I don't have to wake up tomorrow. I'm I'm gonna do this. So I, I submitted to two different publishers on Monday. Um, one has been waiting on it for a while, so. Oh. So exciting. Such a fun place to be in life. Oh, I'm excited for you. Do you have a desire to write? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I enjoy writing, but once it becomes like an assignment to me, I have negative energy towards that. It just reminds me too much about school. And honestly, my twin sister is a fabulous writer. And that was one thing we kind of got compared to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's not that I was a bad writer, but yeah. I always thought I wasn't a very good writer. Yeah. But she's like really good. Sure, like sure. creative writing, storytelling. That's awesome. She just remembers everything <laughs> that the teachers ever told us and <laughs> writes flawlessly. And I was like, let's just get this project done. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And so we got a little comparison to that. So yes, I enjoy writing. I've I've wanted to get into blogging, um, but that has just been a task I haven't been willing to face yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. Hey, you know it's there. That's the cool thing about what we do is like, again, you're not gonna have it all done. We, we can't possibly have it all done. And so knowing that there's a next level, there's a next opportunity, they're there, they're always there. Yeah. So oh, let's, let's switch here. There. Yeah, you will, you will, you totally will. I feel like you're already micro blogging, right? On well, Instagram. Yeah, I guess with Instagram, little mini, mini it blogs. Is. That's <laughs> now that they're, they're calling it microblogging, it's like all the rage now. So you can just turn that into your blog. <laughs> so I want, there you go. I want you to share because I know you've been, you have been working. You don't just like do this thing, right? It, it, it wheels moving on a continual basis. And you have some like programs and stuff that you want to share. And I don't, has that been skewed based on when it launches because of everything going on? No, it actually, it hasn't been. Um, it just hasn't been time up with everything. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Care about like where you, where your heart's been, how you've been putting energy into this new program. So, I've just so over the past two years, I well, 
that's eight years. I've been gathering information with mentoring and coaching. Um, I've gone through different mentoring sessions, different coaching sessions, and really felt drawn to helping people tap into their purpose. Mm -hmm. Kind of like we just talked about. This has been a work in progress, but I was going through through my uh, undergrad and all that. And it was just, I didn't know how to do it all at the same time. Yeah. So um, last year I took two people through like a, a pilot course. They more just kind of came to me around and was like, Hey, Heather, I've heard you studied a lot of this stuff. Can you help me? And I was like, yes, cool. yes, I can. <laughs> and coached them and was just kind of blown away how Heavenly Father just blessed me to help them step into their purpose. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is something I need to move forward with. So mm -hmm. I've been working on creating a program and I have eight students who started this week, actually. Um, just pilot oh, students perfect. going through the process where I'll take them through different mindset tools, um, helping them understand different blocks, blockages that they have in their life. And then we're gonna walk them through the journey map like we had talked about before. And then cool. May 11th, um, I'm hoping to fully launch and extend my reach to just help people really find a life of meaning. That is really rad. So from like an end um, goal perspective with finding life of meaning, finding purpose um, to us. And I feel like a lot of the people that I surround myself with, like we get that. We're like, check, that's awesome. I want that. What about the person who who is curious but doesn't really understand even what that means? Like, what are they receiving um, from a soul level, from a spiritual level during this time with you um, that they can then use? That yeah, sense? that's an interesting question. Um, I feel like maybe maybe this is too much of an assumption, but yeah, I think it's fair to say that people want to find direction and meaning in life and everyone comes to that realizations at some point or another. But I think most people are, a scripture in Amos keeps coming to mind, but I can't quote it. So okay. I'll summarize it. <laughs> it is essentially that we're, they're searching for, food or, or water, but they don't know where to find it. Yeah. And I think sometimes people just don't know how to put the words to it. They just know that their life is lacking. It seems dull and they don't know why. Yeah. And this program um, that I've, that I'm working on, that I'm creating will help the person who recognizes that they need purpose and meaning or wants to just kind of hone in more on that a little more. Yeah. Um, or the person who is just like, you know what? I don't know what's going on, but I, I, my, la my life's lacking fulfillment. Yeah. This program I've created will help people to, if n nothing else, just begin to establish patterns of healthy living in their life that will help them to align themselves and Im accept themselves as who they are with those God-given gifts and talents that they have. That's so, really that answer your question. That's but, amazing. Yes, that's so good. That's that exceeded my expectations. I try really hard to like stay right here so that people surprise me and don't underwhelm me. Uh, it's hard to do those, but oh. that was an amazing answer. I'm excited for for people who listen in and tune in because I know. I am not there right now because I feel like I found the living water and I, I do understand and I'm able in my reflection in that water to see my identity through God. Um, but I feel like I, I don't feel I know that I lived decades. I was going to say centuries, but I'm not that old <laughs> Decades without without comprehending that. And it truly does feel like you're wanderingly aim, wandering aimlessly through the desert like I am parched. I am, I love sunshine, but okay, this is too much sunshine or they're, they're starving. And oftentimes because of the autopilot that we are set on to live at the supersonic speed, we don't even have the cerebral understanding that we're hungry or thirsty. 
Right. And we and we try to fill it with other things. We think, well, I'll just. I saw. I was listening to the radio the other day, and I got kind of upset with the person who was talking because she was like, "It's been proven that." Being on your phone actually boosts like positivity in your brain. I'm like, no, it doesn't. I don't know what stats you're getting that from, but everything I've read is totally against that. And she was promoting some type of like phone oh, game. I don't know gosh. what it was. And I was like, that's yeah. just going to make more people depressed because they're not communicating with people. They're sucked into this, this yes. item that's yes. not adding any more value to their life. Yeah. Anyway. I agree with you is what it's I'm saying. So good. Like we get stuck in this route and then we yeah. try to fill it with things that we think are going to make us feel better. And it yeah. just becomes a where those arbitrary things just become addictions in our lives rather than fully yeah. owning our life, choosing what we want to do, choosing what we want to feel so and true. stepping in our purpose to create something better. Yeah, that's anyway. so good. I love it. I love it. You can tell that you're passionate about it because you're like, ah! <laughs> Radio person, I was... I vented about that for a while. So like, I don't know who decided that commercial, but it's wrong. And, and this <laughs> is teaching true. people about it. Yes. And I think that's the thing, like so often and, and we're in this space. So we're naturally being retargeted for everything that we're talking to you about right now, people mm -hmm. like legitimately, they're going to come to us with coaching. They're going to come to us with choose joy. They're going to come to us with all of these concepts are about to be in our news feed, Right. Yeah. And I'm aware of that fully and open to it. But I, I have a clickbait. It, curiosity because I'm looking at it from a business perspective, but also like I still, even in the awareness of my identity, I still want to choose joy. I still want to know that there's more to life. I still am curious about these um, pursuits that people are on. And so I'll click and I will read. I love to read. And so I'm like learning about these people and what they're sharing and what their background is. And again, I can't judge what or how they're bringing their life to people. Um, and yet at the same time, I'm really curious about what and where they've actually pulled like their source of information from. And so I want people to be really mindful of the fact uh, that it seems like everyone's a little coach now, right? Like everyone's yeah. claiming I'm a coach and that's awesome. But I want you to know and really dig into the how and the why and ask them point blank, like what, how, how did you get to be where you are? What validates, and you don't need to ask for validation from them because validation comes from the Lord himself. But I do believe that it's important for us as consumers to understand where that, that wealth of knowledge is coming from. And I have a girl who, um, girlfriend who is, launching her her free mama collective is what it's called and it's just an advocacy um for women and who are looking to own a healthy life and no judgment in the realm of how they pursue their health for their families their kids specifically as a, a huge passion for her um whether it's in the toxic or non-toxic products or vaccines versus not vaccines, education versus, you know, private education versus independent versus homeschool, all those things. She goes into all this detail and it's somebody could easily be like, where'd you get that? How do you think that that's the right source of information? And she can provide all of the resources that she wants and she does. Um, but at the end of the day, it always comes back to your why. And you are clearly so moved by it. Again, this goes back to your passion and why you have experienced and how you've experienced these highs and lows of your life. What, what's your why? And if people understand the root of who you are, that your why is affected and that's where your power comes from and that's where your source comes from and that's where your energy comes from, there's no negating that. I can't negate that that brought you know, fire under your butt to say, this is right me, right? So I, I just want people to just be aware of that. Find out their why, find out where they're coming from. And honestly, at the end of the day, whether you agree with them or not, or you pursue what they're trying to, you know, share with you from a, um, a consumerism perspective, at the end of the day, if you know their why, you can celebrate them. And you can say, that's amazing that that is where you're going and how you're affecting change and joy and love into the community. It's not for me, but I love it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you just remind me, an article I read recently for this entrepreneurship program I'm in yeah. talked about 
finding your passion mm -hmm. and how you need to pay attention to those moments that like really excite you. Mm -hmm. And that excitement like extends to every single time you think about it. You're just like, Oh, I'm just so excited about this. Yes, yes. And also those things that just make you really angry. <laughs> those mm -hmm. injustices in the world. Just every time you're like, this just yes. makes me mad and someone needs to stop this or do something. Yes. About it. And pay attention to those things because those things, if they excite you that much, if they're making you that frustrated, yes, there's something about them that you can do about it. And he talked about the root word of the word passion, which I'm not remembering exactly what he said, but it related to the idea of sacrifice Ooh, wow. and pain. Mm. And so if you can find something you're passionate, it means that you're willing to sacrifice so much pain and time and effort, um, like the pain and the sacrifice and effort will be worth it because the cause means that much to you. That's so I think good. that's a good kind of, I just really love that example of finding those things that excite you and find those things that yeah. anger you, that really just tick you yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. And that can be a sign of like, hey, this is my calling because there's passion behind me burning about these, I don't know, these oh, events, yeah. these ideas, these theories or whatever it is, injustices in the world and God's calling me to do something about it. So he said that it was a good indicator on that. And I totally agreed with it. Yes. It was just that that is so good. I love that. No, I think it's so good. It's so cool because you'll find yourself like even after this conversation, if I'm listening to a podcast or something happens with my family or something like that there's going to be triggers from this conversation where I'm going to be like, Oh my gosh, that's such an amazing example. And so for us to be aware of those highs and lows, it goes back to what we said at the very beginning. Those are the burning passions of joy and the burning passions of injustice. Mm -hmm. And ultimately that is why that is where you gain your why. This is how you know that your imprint and your finger identity is so different than any other person because surely there's going to be people who have experienced similar scenarios as you. You know, we heard the Me Too movement that, you know, that happened. There was a lot of Me Too's, right? But each of those women were affected or changed or imprinted in such a different way that they are called to a specific niche. They are called to a specific people that they can affect change in their life based on their story. And so I think that it's just really important for us to know again that wherever you set your temperature, there's going to be the community that comes around you that enjoys that temperature too. And then not to discredit what you're doing. If a huge group is over there hanging out with a different, different temperature, that doesn't mean that you should change your temperature to right. go where they are. You stay in, in the place that you're called. And that goes back to that concept from the very beginning of potential versus purpose. We have the potential to change that moral barometer, but is it the right thing to do? And is that where God has called you to be instead living in purpose in the place that he's positioned you and knowing that that passion is a part of your purpose? I think it's so. I love that you said that. Remind me, I'm a storyteller. Yes, I love it. I can tell. It's so good. What? People love stories. I was, I remind me, when I learned this idea that, you know, it doesn't matter where you are. Um, the Lord has something specific for you and you're needed and it, it makes a difference in the big picture, even though it might seem arbitrary to you. So I was at, there was my congregation, my church was holding an event and I just like to be with people, but I got assigned to be in the back, like folding napkins. <laughs> and I was like, it's not very fun. I want to be with, like, in front of the people. Like, I want to be talking to people, not this. And my twin got selected to do, to help people through the event and all this. Yeah. Stuff. I was saying, what the heck? Why am I that I'm folding napkins? This is so not very fun. <laughs> and then I started thinking, well, there's, I started thinking about all the positives, like, well, there are snacks back here, and she doesn't get snacks, so that's good. And then I realized, you know what, this might seem like a small thing, but it's what's helping people feel clean. It helps the buildings stay cleaner, um, which, I don't know, still can seem kind of arbitrary. But the point that I learned from it is that God needs me here. 
and God might call me to do the simple things in life. Mm -hmm. And I might, in fact, I guarantee I will not understand the big picture of it. And that's okay. Because mm -hmm. if I know in my heart that this is what I've been called to do, then there must be a reason for it. And I may not be able to tell, you know, how it's going to affect 2000 years from now or whatever, but it's yeah. going to make a difference. Yeah. So I'm going to do it with all my heart and soul and put all my joy and energy into it because I know it matters yeah. on some grand scheme of things. That's so good. Think about like the author of the Bible, like, oh my God, they really know that people today would be reading and, yeah. and living their words. Yeah. So I wonder if they did. I don't but, know. I could have, you know, positioned them in such a place of purpose that they yeah. knew I have to write this because it's going to be what people need forever. And I, I often feel that way. The other day I was watching a Tony Robbins, um, his Netflix thing that's on right now. And like, I've heard of Tony Robbins. A lot of my mentors have gone to Tony Robbins experiences and it's how it's catapulted them into the things that they do now. Obviously from the faith-based perspective, there's more to what I do, I think, than in a different sense. But I was sitting there taking all of my life's experiences, all my highs and lows, and I was like, so moved. I was bawling hysterically, folding clothes in my in my room. In my room, my kids were out with my husband, so I had this random time. And I I literally could count on one hand how many hours I watch TV a month. So this was like a super rare occasion, bawling, crying, and I knew in that moment, I'm like. It was a message from God saying, you are destined for more. There is mm -hmm. the visions that God, ha that he himself has given you in the times that you've been knocked out on the floor dreaming or you've been in your bed in silence just praying. It is it's purposed. And so for us to know, even in those small moments, the times that you're silent and by yourself, they're just as important as the time that you're in front of the stage with the magnitude of people that you're speaking to. And that goes back to women being confident in what they're called to and knowing mm -hmm. out, not in comparison, that that person's maybe seemingly more grandiose or more visible calling doesn't mean that it's more important than your calling that our calling as stay at home moms or our calling as teachers or our calling as writers, maybe you feel like you're always behind the scene. Maybe you're like the one person on the assembly line who's putting the lug nut on the tire, why that analogy just came to me. But like without that lug nut, think what would happen to the person driving down the street, the millions of people driving down the street. like. You are so purpose. And I just want people just like you, Heather, like that, that you have this burning passion and similarity to me. We want that you guys to have freedom in your calling and know that it is so much bigger than you could possibly understand the words that you're scripting today, the words that you're sharing with your neighbor, the words that you're writing in the letter to your pen pal across the world, whatever, whatever is burning inside of you, know that there is there is more to it than you can even possibly understand. Love it. Yeah. So good. I am so grateful for this time with you. I feel like in the midst of everything going on, even your coaching, like how cool that that program launched on Monday when like the whole world was in chaos and these women are like, Oh, I'm fine. My purpose today, this is happening. Yeah. I, I feel like God's hand was in that. Cause I just, Felt good about that date for some reason. I could have started sooner. Yeah. I was like, you know what? We're just going to start on March 16th and it's going to be okay. Yeah. You couldn't have planned that. Like, that's the thing. That's what's so cool sometimes is that even outside of our, of our cultural understanding of what's good and what's bad, like God's like, I already, I already figured this out. Got you, sister. I already got it for and you. Thank goodness. Cause I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Hey, we need that vulnerability. People need to understand that we don't have it all figured out. So I am grateful that we're here and that we still were able to share and, and meet women and
and and men, whoever is listening, to know that you are purposed and and know that this conversation in its uh, unplanned, untuned experience, like. It was purpose too, and I, I'm just grateful that you have the opportunity to meet people in the way that you're doing it in such a uniquely beautiful way, because um, it's so necessary. Amen to that. Yeah, girl. All right, y'all. We'll see you later. If you want to find out more about Heather, actually, before we jump off, where can they find you? So they can find me on Facebook at Conversational Designs. And then also Instagram, Conversational Designs. Cool. And I'll tag um, that link. I'll link it right to it. And what about your program? Thank you. Where can they find your program? Can I link to it? Too? Um, it should be posted on Instagram coming May 11th. I'm going to be launching officially May 11th. Yay. And my website right now is a work in progress, but it'll be on the website, www.conversationaldesigns.com. And then you can find me on Instagram. I'll be posting it up there, a link to it. Yeah. And on Facebook. Well, I pray for your success and I pray for the, you know, the purpose that's going to be instilled and understood and uncovered in all of these women because it's already there, y'all. It's just a matter of, of pursuing it. So thanks again and we'll chat soon. Okay. I'm Tamara Andress. I'm your Fit and Faith host and I am so excited to just be here to share with you other movers, dreamers, shakers, entrepreneurs, pastors, Whatever. If you've got a head and you've got a heart, I'm so excited to explore who that is, whose you are, and discover your wholeness, your health, your wealth, wealth, and your joy. I love to exude happiness. I want people to know that this is not, um, this came with trial. You guys, this came with a lot of effort. This came with a lot of lows and so many highs. And I want us to experience those together. This is a real community of dreamers and I'm excited to help catapult your calling, uh, your kingdom experience, the purpose of your imprint on the world, wherever, however that is. So come along for the ride. I am excited to chat with you, like, comment, review, Send me a DM, send me an email. It's me responding, even though I have an incredible team. Um, and so I'm just excited to get to know you. Let's connect, let's create community, and let's walk in our calling.